Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to bring God's word to you today. And today is Friday and guess what? It's the last Friday for the month of August. And this is the last broadcast we're going to be having for this month of August. By the time I see you next time, it's going to be the month of September. Praise God. And let me tell you this, God has already spoken to me concerning the month of September. He says, the month of September Ask me for mercy. Praise God. The month of September, God is saying, ask me for mercy. Now, if God is saying, ask me for mercy, it means he's ready to release his mercy to us. And then, listen, he, he said that you're going to need the mercy of God. And, and there's a lot of, I have to, to tell, tell you about mercy. But I'm going to be sharing these things during our uh, during our meeting, prayer meeting on the 1st of September. So I also invite you to join that meeting. It's an online meeting via Zoom. So you can join us. Uh, we're going to be praying all day at the intervals of three, three hours. That's according to the watches. You know, those of you that are prayer people, you understand that. Now we're going to be, we're going to, the meeting is going to start by 12 midnight on the 31st. See? 12 midnight, 31st, breaking into the first. And that's going to be our first meeting. And then we're going to have the next meeting by 3 a.m. So we'll have 12 midnight, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. And the last prayer meeting is going to be by 9 p.m. I'm going to be sharing with you the things the Lord has spoken to me concerning the month of September. And those of you in Nigeria and those of you in the United States of America, Watch it because September is a very important month for um, these two nations. Now, I'm not saying they are the only two nations, but I heard specifically from the Lord to pray for these two nations, Nigeria and the United States of America, especially for the month of September. And Lord said the prayer to pray is mercy. So join us during this um, prayer meeting. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are we ready to call for that daily bread? Join me in faith and say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. And it's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We are talking about the knowledge of God and, and we're rounding off uh, this talk. We can never exhaust the teaching of God's word. So maybe another time God will lead, or even in other topics, we still bring forth the knowledge of God in everything that we will have to deal with. Now, I'm already hearing the Lord talk about mercy. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to receive utterance from him in the month of September, what we're going to be dealing with. But then, you see, I read a scripture to you yesterday where God was saying, um, Anyone who wants to glory should glory in this, that he knows and he understands me, okay? And I shared some thoughts with us along these lines. The, the knowledge and the understanding of God, it's, it's so important in everything. I told you before, when, when we started this topic, why is this important? Because it affects your decision making every day the the knowledge of god that you have will affect your decision every day just like yesterday i was talking to you about titan see if you have the knowledge of god concerning titan it affects your decisions and then when you do it right it produces the righteousness and the excellence of god in your heart and then also it manifests on the earth this week, I shared with you also a few days ago that God is concerned about material things. Every dealing God have with you always ends up producing material things. As long as you are in this world, everything you need. But then it doesn't mean he's, he, he, he wants to give everybody a Lamborghini to drive. No. Now that's when you begin to go into covetousness, okay? But then when it comes to making your life comfortable, that's what God is after. 
Every revelation is given. Go study these things. Go ask yourself, so what is the purpose? No, God is, God is concerned about our salvation. So what, do you, what, what, what is the end point of your salvation? Go to heaven. Go to heaven to do what? And to live with him. Don't say, when you're living with him, what are you going to be doing? What's the end point of all these things that we're doing? Oh, God wants us to walk in holiness. Okay, so why do we, why does he want us to walk in holiness? So that we'll be like him. So when we be like him, what? And so that we'll make heaven. So we'll, we'll make heaven, what next? And when you read scriptures, you realize that we will not stay in heaven. We'll stay here in this world, <laughs> praise God. So when we stay here in this world, our holy selves, doing what? Worshipping him, you know, like, like the angels. Oh, every day we just go and say, oh, indeed. no. I tell people this. I said, we are still living fake lives. Every life, everything we're doing right now is fake. Until Jesus comes. And then the, we get into the, what Jesus himself called the regeneration. Now, at that point, the, now that's when you begin to know exactly what God did. In the book of Genesis chapter 1. That's when you will know it. But then there are some of us who God have given. Uh, uh, God has have given grace to be able to see. And not just see. To be able to practice the life of that kingdom. Yes. And what is it? What does it mean to practice, of the, to practice the life of that kingdom? Just be led by the spirit of God in your decision making. The things you want to do. Okay. You want to build a house. What have God said about that house that you want to build? If his word is not attached to it, that house does not have any eternal value. You want to drive a car. What has God said? Now, this is eternal life. Okay. And this is how we practice eternal life. So why am I saved? I'm saved so that my mind, oh, I was explaining salvation to someone recently, you know, went out preaching the gospel and, and, and I met this lady and I, I began to share with her. And in such simple terms, what does salvation mean? It simply means listening to Jesus in everything. Aligning your mind and your decision to his thoughts. See? So, on a normal day, if someone offends me, okay, and I go, you, I can't take that sitting down. I've got to defend myself and I've got to attack also. And that's what normal people do. But say if people do things differently, why do they do things differently? Will I still feel like attacking that person? Yes. But then I hear a voice in me saying to me, don't do that. Okay. And then I restrain myself because of that voice. And where is that voice coming from? That voice is coming from the Lord Jesus. And then you see Jesus thought and said, if someone slaps you on this side, turn the other side. Now one thing, but that isn't that foolishness, but hold on until you understand the purpose. So now you see first and foremost, why would you want to attack that person? Because you don't want to look weak. Because you don't want that person to feel they have gained advantage over you. Now you see where pride is working. Okay. But then you see yourself. You, you, you felt like attacking, but the word of the Lord came to you and you slowed down. Okay. Now, someone else watching gets inspired by your action. No one will get inspired if you attack and then fight, fight breaks out and people get injured. No one will be inspired by that. People will say, but I, I wish that person had not. Hey, but then, even if that person had I wish you had not responded the way you responded. But hey, hear me now. Someone else watching you as a believer in Jesus Christ, restrain, even though they saw what happened. They see you restrained from responding. Now, one wants to know why did you restrain yourself? Is it that you were scared? You were scared he was going to beat you. Say, no. I mean, look at me. I can deal with that person. But but the word of the Lord came to me and said, Don't do that. And I obeyed. Now automatically you're telling someone, I live by the word of the Lord. Someone else looks at the whole thing and says, ah, What you did today really, really impressed me. I'm so impressed. I want to give you a gift. It happens. It happens. And the person gives you a gift. Now you see your righteousness has produced a gift. And you'll be amazed that gift may be something you've been praying about for the past three years. 
This is how God works. So when people say, does God bless people? You know, they're, they're, you've heard all those kind of arguments. Does God bless people? Then people go, no, God does not bless people. When they mean blessing, they, you know, people can just, just be contradicting themselves. Oh, God does not bless people with material things. Who said God does not bless people with material things? When you now want to listen to the explanation, they go out of context and begin to tell you something entirely different from, from, from what they say. They say God does not bless you with material things. Okay, so what happened to Job? What happened to Job? Now, listen to me. Uh, Satan appeared before God. And God asked him, have you considered my servant, Job? What was, God's re- what was Satan's response? Satan told God. He said, Job does not fear you for naught. The reason Job fears is because you have blessed the work of his hands. See that now? Now, this is Satan's testimony. Whether we believe it or we don't believe him. But this was his testimony he gave in the presence of God. He said, the reason Job fears you is because you have blessed the work of his hands. So you find Satan testifying that God blesses people, blesses them, the work of their hands. Now, what do you call the blessing of God to the work of the, uh, the, the blessing of the work of the hands of someone? It culminates in material things. Now, why was Job a, why was Job a subject of, uh, of, of conversation in the first place? Because Job had stuff. Job was rich. Okay. Yes, Job was rich. Eh, and it doesn't mean now stop being hypocrites let me ask you a question you know those of you that went to school you know up to university let me just ask you a very simple question if you i mean you went to school you had lecturers okay and we, we all had different kinds of lecturers the good the bad and the ugly ones now if you if you knew a lecturer not just a lecturer a professor okay now a professor is assumed to have reached the peak of learning okay Meaning in academic setting, this, this man is, you know, top there. Okay. If you see a professor who is good, he does everything well, but then he drives, you know, a Volkswagen Beetle. He comes to class, he comes to school with a Volkswagen Beetle. 1979. He's still driving it till this day. Now, this man is good. He no even his name is not stained in anything. He teaches well. Ask you a simple question. Will you look at that professor and say he is a blessed man? The answer is no. Is he a good man? Yes. Is he a blessed man? You say no. Eh, he can be blessed in other things, not, not maybe not material things. Hold on. I want to follow your thoughts. What are the other things you will look at and say he's blessed? Oh, he has children that he has raised up well and they are doing so, they are doing so well. They are doing so well because you saw physical children from that man well behaved. So it's still about things. Nobody is blessed in his heart. There must be the produce, the fruit of the blessing. Okay? So yeah, he, he doesn't have to be material. It can be with, a, you know. He, he, but you look at the man, the car he drives, and they ask, is this man a blessed man? You'll be quick to say, no, ah, no, 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 no. Now watch me, watch me. If you have another professor who you know charges students to pass them, he does all kinds of things, and then he drives the best of cars on, on, on campus. Okay, now you see that man. Now he comes with his car, his beautiful car, and then he don't, you know him. And then he drives and he parks and he's coming. And somebody asks him, Is this lecturer a blessed man? You will say no. You will say no. Is he a rich man? Yes, he's rich. But the, the question is, is he a blessed man? You say no. Why would you say no? Because you know that these things he's driving did not come the right way, did not come from God. So even though he has things, you still will not say he is blessed. Also, the man who is doing things right because he doesn't have things, you will not say he is blessed. You understand what I'm driving at? But then when you see a, a, a lecturer who's good, who's, who's 
who's doing what is right. And then you, you hear that, oh, one organization gave him a brand new car. What social organization he had worked for, he did something for, they just came and they surprised him. Now he said, is this man? He said, man, this man is a blessed man. Do you know he has five cars and he didn't buy anyone? That's, that's the reward for, for being good. That's, you see, you are still qualifying the blessing with things. Now you do these things. You, this is how you reason. But someone comes to tell you, hey God, the blessing does not mean, you say yes, 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 actually. You're deceiving yourself. You're letting somebody deceive you. The blessing reflects in things. So look at Job. Now the devil said, Satan said, you have blessed the work of his hands. And God says, touch, just, just touch those things now and see if he will not cause it to your face. And God said, okay, go ahead. And you know what happened to Job. But guess what? At the end of Job's life, chapter 42 of his life, let me read something to you. Chapter 42 of the book of Job from verse 10. It says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Follow me now. Watch this carefully. Then came there unto him all his brethren, all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him and comforted him all over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money. Are you listening to me? And everyone an airing of gold. Now the Bible says everyone Job ever knew. From family members to acquaintances. They all came to see him. And all of them came with something. Money, gold, gifts of gold to him. Okay. Mm. Look at verse 12. So the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. For he had, he began to list things. Why do we say Job was blessed? Things. Things. So God caused people to bring things to Job. And that's why he said in verse 12, he says, so, so means this is how God blessed the later end of Job. And now he had this amount of sheep, this amount of cattle, this amount of, of servants, and, and, and all these things. It was still things that were listed. Things. Okay, let me show you Luke chapter 18. Luke 18. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is Jesus now in Luke 18. Jesus speaking. Now, this is the story of this rich young ruler that came to Jesus and and he said, Master, what do I do? I inherit life. And Jesus said, go sell everything you have and, and give to the poor. And then come and follow me. Now, the man walked away sad. Let me show you this. The man walked away sad. Let me, let me jump all that story and read from verse. Mm. I'll read from verse 26. And they said, and they that heard it said, who then can be saved? Because Jesus has said it's difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. He says it's easier for a, a, um, a needle or a camel to enter through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. So he say, who then can be saved? And then Jesus said, verse 27, and he said, these things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, look, we have left all and followed thee. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, there is no man who had left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come everlasting life. Who said this? Jesus. So how is he going to get it? Understand. Jesus said, whosoever does not have this thing, say whosoever leaves. So he has had them before. He left these things. 
And then he, because of Jesus, he turned now, remember I talked about to taking decisions because of Jesus. So he turned away from these things to follow Jesus, okay? And Jesus said, in this life, he will receive manifold. Yeah, that's what he said. He will receive manifold more. That's plenty more in different ways. Yes. Plenty more. And then you come tell me that he's not concerned about you having more things. Come on now. Don't rate God too low. He wants you blessed. He wants you blessed. No matter what you're going to say, God wants you blessed. Why? So that you can be a blessing to others. And the more we are a blessing to others, the more we keep our society safe. The more we keep our society in righteousness. And God looks down and he is pleased. The time is up. Praise God. Remember, I'm inviting you for, for the meeting on the 1st of September, beginning from the 12 midnight 31st into the 1st. The Zoom, uh, the Zoom ID and, and passcode is on your screen. Don't forget, save the date and join us. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.